In wind chill, certain kinds of objects have life cycles associated with them. And these are typically things like CAD documents, WT parts, standard documents, change objects, and more. For example, here I am on the object information page for a CAD assembly. Down here, we can see that it has a life cycle template associated with it called one phase development. And this one pretty much has three phases. You have design, prototype, release. Then we've got the obsolescence and under review, which are kind of standard for most different life cycle templates. But let's say that we decide that this isn't good enough. I want to create a new life cycle template that I want to use for other objects. Well, to do that as an administrator, you can go to your utilities and create a new lifecycle template. So here I will click on the Browse tab in the Navigator. Then I'm going to go to my Site tab. And then over here we have Utilities. And I'll click on that. And over here we have the Lifecycle Template Administration Utility. And in this particular wind chill installation that I am using, there are a lot of different life cycles in here. Here is the one that we were just looking at. If I click on the view information, it'll bring up a dialog box that will show the life cycle definition with its various different phases and the transitions that are defined for it. But if we want to create a brand new life cycle template, you will use this icon over here to create it. And so here I'm going to start off by choosing whether I want it to be basic or advanced. In this video, we'll take a look at basic life cycles. In another video, we'll take a look at defining an advanced life cycle template. Let's give it a name and I'll call it the MCAE product development. And if you want to, you could write a description inside of here. And so next up, we're going to define the different states that are available in this life cycle. I'll start off by clicking the new button over here. This is the first state that is being displayed. And the first thing that you're going to pick, let's make this a whole lot wider over here. I'm going to add a few different states inside of here. I'll go to the drop down list. And let's say in my new one, I want to have the first state be concept. So that's good. There you can see it over there. The next thing I'll do right now is specify the version series. And by default, you have two different versioning series that you can use. There's numeric, which as the name implies, is going to use numbers. And then you have the mill standard version series, which uses letters like A, B, C, D, E, so forth and so on. That one skips over a few different letters like the letter I, which can look like the number one. I see it also skips over like Z, which can look like two. But again, that one is letter based. If you want to, you can create your own versioning series. I know there are companies that do this, but those are the two that you have out of the box. So here we have our first life cycle state over here. Let's create a second one. I'll click on that. And this vertical yellow orangish bar, that re represents the gate transition between the two states. And so for the second state, I'm going to scroll down over here. Let's choose the second one. I want to, want to call it design. So after we do some initial concepting, then we'll go into a detailed design phase. And again, I'll stick with numbers over here. Now, I know that there are organizations that will start with numbers and then go to letters or stuff like that. Eh, me personally, I prefer to keep it simple. All right, let's then do a third state over here. After we do design, then we're going to build a prototype. And you can see out of the box, there are quite a few different choices that you have inside of here. You can create your own custom lifecycle states. I'm going to warn you, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Creating a lifecycle state, you have to go into your system, your implementation, you have to edit a file, you've got to compile it. Ah, it's a bit of work and something that should be left to the experts, of which I do not consider myself one. All right, so there we have the prototype. Let's throw in a couple more over here. I'm going to create a new one for testing. Let's scroll down over here. There we go. I'm going to have a test phase. 
And again, I'm just going to keep everything to numbers. That's how I like to do things. And then we'll have one final real estate over here. Let's go to a production state. Some people call it manufacturing. It's up to you. And I'm going to add two other ones in here for different actions. We're going to add in a state for something being obsolete. And in this case over here, out of the box, we've got obsolescence or obsolete. I'm going to choose obsolescence. And the last one that I'm going to add in here is going to be for under review. So it's going to be sort of an intermediate state that something will be in during different operations. So there I have my different states laid out over here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make sure that I've got a version series set up for each one of these. Looks like I skipped over a few. That's good, that's good, that's good. All right, so now that we have that set up, let me grab the dialog box and make it longer over here. You can see that we've got different tabs in here. We've got the transitions tab, the roles tab, the access control, and the workflow tabs. These three are not selectable because I am doing a basic life cycle. These other three tabs over here are only available if you are doing a, an advanced life cycle. So I'm not gonna even bother clicking on them because I can't. But with a basic life cycle, you can define the different transitions. And the way that we're looking at over here, right now I've got the concept state selected. This is the current state over here. And these are different potential destination states depending on these different actions. And what you'll do is you'll define for most of these what you want the destination state to be under this action. And so the first one over here is the selection of a single potential destination state that can result from a change notice. So this is currently in the concept state. Maybe as the result of a change notice, I want it to go to the very next higher or more mature life cycle state, which is design. So that's good. And then we have a lock state. And this lock state is part of a promotion process. If something is uh, being promoted under a promotion request, what state do you want it to go to? Well, that's why I have this under review state created over here. And then when something becomes obsolete, what state do you want it to go to? Well, that's why I chose my obsolescent state. And now we have, okay, if something is going to be released to production, what state should it go to? Well, my state is called production. Some people call it manufacturing. Hey, whatever you want, you're going to specify that as your life cycle state. All right, so let's see. Let's say that someone is going to put this through a promotion request process. Well, I want it to be promoted from concept to design. Then we have these two other different transitions over here, refine and review. These are used in custom workflows. I don't have any custom workflows, so I do not need to specify a destination state for these two different actions. Because again, I'm not doing any workflow development right now. Maybe if I do some pondering and I come up with some different custom workflows, maybe I'll want to go and change these over here. All right, so the next one is, let's say that something is in concept and I decide to revise it, what state should it go to? Well, probably not gonna release it in the concept state, but if it's gonna be revised, I want it to be revised, go to the next available number in the series within the concept lifecycle state. So you can specify that the state itself is going to be the destination for some actions. And the last choice that we have over here is uh, what are the different potential destination states if someone performs a set state action? And again, a set state is a special administrative privilege that allows certain users to change the current lifecycle state of an object. This is going to make some configuration management experts' heads explode. I know when I set up a wind chill instance in the past, I gave certain people vast powers under set state. Some people are like, oh my goodness, that is a complete violation of configuration management. But in my opinion, 
wind chill and product life cycle management is a tool to help you get the job done and there are times when you're like hey we need to change this we need to push this through so i tend to make set state as liberal as possible so if something is in concept hey i'm going to say that the people who have permission to set state can set state and concept object to any of these five states over here all right, so that is good for the definition of the concept state. And then we would go through these other different states over here and set up what we want them to be. So again, let's take a look at now doing this from the design state. If someone does a change notice, I want something to go from design to prototype. When something is locked, it should be an under review. I'm always gonna use that. I'm always going to use the obsolescent state for an object that's going to become obsolete. I'm always going to use production for production released. And let's see, when someone promotes something from the, the design state, I want it to go to prototype. Uh, again, I'm not going to do refine or review. If something is going to re revise something that's in design, I want it to be in design. I don't want it to go back to concept. And for set state, I'm going to say that someone can set state this to any of these different states over here. And again, we'll go through, and I'm gonna do this one faster because I'm basically just gonna repeat this for the next three states over here. All right, so I set up my new destinations for those three different states over here. Let's say that something is set to obsolete. If someone does a change notice on it, uh, let's say that I want it to go to design. Again, I want to use under review. I can check obsolescence, but it doesn't really make sense to obsolete something that's already obsolete. Again, we'll choose the production over here. I'm not gonna specify a promote for an obsolete object. It really isn't going to go up. Again, I'm gonna skip revi refine and review. If something rev someone revises something that's obsolete, let's have it go back to design. And for a an obsolete object, maybe I only want it to be able to go to design, prototype, testing, and production. So that's how I have these different states, states set up. For under review, well, this is only going to be a transition state over here, so I don't need to define anything for the transitions here because people are not going to perform these different actions on an object that is under review, except for maybe set state. So for set state, I'm gonna say, hey, people can set state something under review to any of these different states over here. So that way I have my life cycle set up over here. I'm happy with it. Let's choose save and close. And now when I scroll in my list over here, you can see that we have the one that I've created. Right now it is checked out because I just created it over here. So I can select it and then from the actions, let's choose to check it back in. And here we get the check-in dialog box. You can add in any comments that you want. Now I can click OK. And the check-in was successful. We can see it over here. And you'll notice that we can hover over and it tells us that this is a basic life cycle. If I select it right now and I want to make some changes to it, I need to check it back out. But that's how you can create a basic life cycle template for use. Now what I can do with it, I can use this in object initialization rules so that when a certain kind of object is created, it will be assigned this life cycle template. I can also select existing objects and change it from its existing life cycle template to this new one that I created. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded.
Thank you very much.